that we are one spirit, Lord. Yes. Your spirit that binds us all together into you. And we thank you, Lord, that you direct our steps. Yes, God. You said that we would hear a voice and turn and you would be there. You'll never leave us or forsake us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you do, even without our knowing, direct our steps. You do lead us and guide us into all truth. And Lord, we celebrate you this morning. We worship you. We exalt you and magnify you, Lord, for you alone are worthy. You are a great and a mighty God, a good God, a God that loves his people created us in your image that we might share heaven and we bless you for it this morning in jesus name praise the lord give the lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. amen amen god bless you. you may be seated thank you jesus praise the lord thanks ron and uh thank you suzanne thank you worship team and thank everybody for sharing amen Appreciate the Lord speaking through each and every one of you. Amen. Hallelujah. We live in exciting times. Praise yes. the Lord. We could look at things and be depressed and bummed out, or we can look at them through the eyes of the Lord and see the blessings that God has in store for all of us. Praise the Lord. I was thinking about all the politicians and political talk and all the junk and Sally and I were actually, even, well, actually, Sally was talking about it. And I was listening, praise the Lord, which is not unusual at our house, praise God. But uh, talking about how people can even think the things that they think and say the things that they say and not be bothered by it, you know, not see the irrational kind of craziness of it all. But it's the world that we're in, praise God. How many, you know, that anybody, let me just ask you this. Do you know the difference between a dead cat on the road and a dead politician on the road? A dead cat has skid marks around it. <laughs> Praise God. You know, the time that we live in actually makes you feel paranoid. Right? I mean, it's just, it, it's the old saying that, you know, you're not paranoid if they really are out to get you, you know. That's right. But that's kind of the way I'm, uh, I mean, how many paranoid schizophrenics does it take to screw in a light bulb? Who wants to know? <laughs> you know, I'm kind of insecure. I've, I've talked about, I've got some OCD issues, you know, and. And these are real, but they don't bother me anymore. I mean, I'm used to them, and they just kind of the way things are. I mean, I, you know, I could go through all kinds of little weird things that I do, but uh, it, it really doesn't bother me. I understand it's just kind of a quirky part of my nature. In the bathroom, in, the, in our bathroom uh, linen closet, there's where Sally stacks the towels in there, and, and we have, like, multicolored towels. We have a bunch of white ones, but then we have some that are two different colors. And I'm always rearranging them so that there's, you know, like a gray one here and a beige one here, so that there isn't two gray ones or, you know what I'm saying? I know it doesn't make any sense, right? But it bothers me if they're not that way. I never, I don't say anything to her. I just make sure that they're like they're supposed to be before I leave the bathroom, you know. So, you know, I'm kind of insecure. And uh, in fact, I get depressed when I find out that people I hate don't like me. <laughs> So I'm kind of paranoid too. I, I, a lot of times I think the car that's in front of me is actually following me, but he's taking the long way around. <laughs> the other day I was, I was just walking, you know, and they're building this house and uh, this guy's up on the roof hammering and uh, he called me a paranoid weirdo in Morse code. <laughs> So, praise the Lord. You're here all week. You got to live with your stuff, you know. That's the way it is. Praise God. 
All right. I appreciate the testimonies this morning because they do speak to uh, what I want to uh, talk to you about. And in fact, I was a little unsure about it until all the things were said that were said. And you'll understand that as we go along. But uh, last week, uh, when uh, Debbie said something about uh, she where everybody was, you know how a lot of people were gone and uh, weren't here that were here when she was coming before she came back this time. And she said that the Lord had told her that the people that are here, they had done some shaking and so forth, which goes in line with what we're talking about here. It's not specific, but it's kind of the same idea, you know. And, uh, and she said that the Lord was going to give us increase from the people that are here. And yeah. that he'll, he'll increase it. It'll be God that does it. Nobody will get credit for it but God. Amen. Amen. So uh, I want to talk to you about the God who wants to give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Whatever your desire is, God wants to provoke you yes. to believe. Because yes. Yes. a lot of times we get things come up in our heart and we desire it and, and, it, and we, we struggle with it because it seems too big for us. It seems like I, that can't happen because I know my life, I know my situation and circumstances and so forth and whatever it might be that limits me, age, you know, time left to do it, uh, finances, uh, you know, whatever it might be. We, we always come up with a reason you know, rationally, intellectually, that'll tell us, that's crazy. You know, that's for somebody else. You, you can't have it, you know. So God's trying to do some things for us. And I think for the church in general, so I'm going to be speaking in, in, the, in terms of what was being said here this morning. Okay? Yes. I didn't know that's what I was going to be speaking. I didn't know that was the context, but I know it now. Okay? So I want you to hear it in that context. All right? So uh, I want to begin, though, with Psalms uh, 103, verse 5, Peter. Psalms 103, verse 5. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Praise the Lord. That word is, Amen. he satisfies your desires with good things. That's another translation. He satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Look at Psalms uh, now 37 verse 4. I'm going to try to not be as long this Sunday. We went a little over last week, nearly 20 minutes or more. So I'm going to, I'm, I had it in my mind as I was doing this to try to kind of condense everything as much as possible so we're not late again today because my wife's also got to go to a baby shower for uh, one of our granddaughters. It's going to be our eighth great-grandchild coming up here. So. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. That'll make you feel old. Great grandpa, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's good, though. It's good to be around to see it. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Okay, so... As I said, sometimes we think that uh, when we really desire something, it can't be God, right? It's like we get this idea that God is some mean ogre, you know, who, who wants to erase anything that comes from our own heart, from our own longings, right? The opposite is true. God loves your desires. Yes. He wants to see what makes you tick. That's one way that he knows, by the things that you desire, right? Look, uh, John 14, uh, 12 through 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name... I'll do it. So, look, I mean, we're talking about he wants to, your desires tell him about you, right? Now, I know that he made you. I mean, I know he knows everything about you, right? Right. But he can only communicate with us when we open up the door of relationship. Mm -hmm. 
That's where co-laboring begins. That's why he says, I know what you have needs of, but I want you to ask. Right. right? He wants us to open up to him so we recognize this is God doing something here in my life. It isn't just luck. It isn't just happenstance. It isn't just circumstance. It's, it's the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so Psalms 37, 4 again. He said he gives you, he wants to give you the desire of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you yes. the desires of your heart. Yep. Amen? That literally means God wants to be impacted by what you think, by what you dream. By, you know, we have daydreams. We have night dreams. We have times when we think about things. I mean, I don't know if you, but I mean, I go to bed at night sometimes, and I'm thinking about specific things when I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, intentionally dreaming before I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So he wants intimacy with us. He opens himself up to the desires of his people. Yes. Praise God. Now, here's interesting. The word desire is made up of the prefix D, meaning of, and sire, meaning the father. So literally, desire by nature is from God. It's of God. It's of the father. Right. Praise the Lord. And so we come to Jesus and, uh, and we have desires, before, we, before we're born again, we have desires that are corrupt. Yeah. Right? Because we're not connected to the Father, so our desires are not true desires. They're lust. They're lots of other things, but they're not of the Father. Right. It's only when we come to the Lord that those are able to be used by God. We come to know God and are known of God, right. and then our desires are from God. We don't necessarily think that way. We don't think or dream anymore independent of God. You can't. Right. Not if you're born again. Right. No matter what you think. Right. Amen. But because of God, we have specific dreams. We have specific desires. Amen. Yep. He gives us this one huge idea or, or kind of basis for everything that we dream or think. Amen. Amen. And he, he does that to cause us to shape every part of our life, amen, on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Amen. Now, I know we have weird dreams, too, but I'm talking about the dreams, the, the dreams that are not the crazy dreams, right. right? The dreams that come from God, right. that, that literally come from the spirit, not just your subconscious. Right. Amen. And they, they are based on this one truth that God has established in us on earth, on me as it is mm -hmm. in you. Yes. So heaven and me become one. All of my needs get met. All of my desires are satisfied. That's the desire. That's what God wants to do. That's being of the Father. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that, that's the divine destiny, basically, that David's talking about there in Psalms chapter 37 and verse 4. If you can go back there again, he says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he'll give thee the desires of my heart. David has this revelation. He has this understanding, amen, of God that the average person doesn't have. And he's talking about it. Look at verse 5, Peter. I'm going to just bounce through a few of these just for, for an example here. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Right? Now, we've in the past read these as religious kind of duties. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, trust me. Yeah. Just give it to me. Cast your care upon me. Cast your desire on me, and I'll make it, I'll make it happen because it came from me in the first place. Right? Yeah. Amen. right? Yeah. So whatever he has said, he will bring it to pass. He said, my word comes down like rain out of heaven. Yeah. Amen. And it produces things to grow. Yes. It's like the seed. Amen. And it will not come back to me void. In other right. words, it's going to come back producing whatever it is I send it to produce. Right. Praise the Lord. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Verse 23 through 25. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. 
Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. Can you say amen? Some of yeah. us can, praise the Lord. And yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. Verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes, he is. Pay attention to your desires. Yes. Pay attention to the dreams. Because they may have been motivated of your father. Yes. He provokes us to be zealous. Amen. Yes. Of our desires. Yes. See, humanly speaking, we'll give up a desire once we have conflict. Right. Or once there's, you know, resistance. Right. But God gives us this, this sense of zealot, yes. you know, or zealousy. Not jealousy, zealousy. <laughs> to persevere. Right. Until we see it come to pass. Yes. Until we experience yes. whatever that desire is yes. that he's promised us. Yes. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. <clears throat> For we walk by faith, yep. not by sight. Yes. Right. Praise the Lord. See, people get discouraged because their dreams haven't manifested. Because uh -huh. right. their desire hasn't come to pass. They get frustrated, and what happens? They begin to doubt God. Yep. They begin to doubt the truth of God's word yep. to give you your desire. Yep. They begin to question, maybe that wasn't God at all. Maybe that was just me. Maybe yep. that, If it was you, it was God. Exactly. Yes. Amen? If it's not contrary to the word of God, right. we're not talking about going out and raping and murdering and no. robbing banks or something. We're talking about anything that's good for you. God yes. wants you to have it. Jesus. Amen. Every good and perfect yes. gift comes down from the Father's yes. life with whom there's no variableness. He doesn't yes. change. There's no shadow of turning with him. Amen. He's the same yes. yesterday, yes. today, yes. and forever. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Praise the Lord. You know what? In Washington, in the... Uh, House and the Senate there, in that entire area. You know what you call a wise person? A tourist. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 34. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. Yes. Now look at this. Yes. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, or you've got a desire and it hasn't come, it, it, it's depressing. Yeah. You haven't seen it come to pass, right? right. But when the desire comes, it is, it is a tree yes, of life. It yes. now, it's interesting that he uses that as a descriptive mm -hmm. way of, of defining fulfilled desires. Right. right? Your desires are intended to make you strong in every area of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? The Bible, he says, heart, hope for it makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. The Bible calls the fulfillment of your desires a tree of life. Yeah. That's how God defines it. That's how he describes it. Look at Genesis now, chapter 2 and verse 9. So in the midst of the garden, right, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to sight. And good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. So when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. An angel, the scripture says, blocks the way now for them to get to the tree of life. Amen. That wasn't punishment. Because the tree of life added an eternal aspect to it. It's like I said, before you're born again, your desires, they're not coming from God or they would have eternal effects. Yes. Right? So it isn't until you're born again that you desire or they're of the Father, right? right. 
before that, there's something else. You might call it a desire, but actually it's something lustful, it's something whatever, selfish or whatever it might be, right? right. So God puts an angel there to block the way to the tree of life because whatever it is they're wanting, it's going to have eternal value. So if they are lost, if they're undone, if they're evil and, and separated from God, they're going to be that way forever. Yeah. And that's why God separates that. Amen? So the tree of life adds this eternal aspect. Man's dreams and desires were disconnected from the heaven on earth. Yeah. Right? So they become deadly. Right. Praise God. Revelation chapter 22, verses 2 through 5. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and forever." So here, the believers are eating fruit of the tree of life. So obviously, there's nothing to stop us from going to the tree of life anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Proverbs 13, 12 is talking about. Praise the Lord. The tree is within our reach. It is. Your yes. desires being met, amen, yes. is the tree of life. Yes. Is. Praise the Lord. So it's fruit, amen, is released in us. It's talking about the tree within our reach. It, its fruit releases in us. Yes. And the scripture talks about strength, courage, yes. a sense of destiny, a sense of purpose. Yes. So God gives us desires for more than just to satisfy some want, right. but to connect us to eternity, to yes. connect us to yes. the tree of life. Amen. So that we have a sense of destiny. We have yes. a sense of purpose. We have a sense of heaven on earth. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. So where does that tree grow? It grows up from the fulfillment of our individual, unique, God-given dreams, amen, and desires. Yes. Praise the Lord. Think about anything that God has spoken to you, yeah. uh -huh. amen, and when you stay focused on that, it connects you, yes. amen, to God. It makes you think in eternal thinking. Amen. It gives you a sense of something more than just this natural world and what can be accomplished in it. This is where the world doesn't get it. They've got hungers. They've got wants. They've got desires, but they're not desires of the Father. They don't have any connection with it, so they don't understand it. It's just, give me this, give me that. I'll give you something, but it isn't, it isn't going to satisfy any heaven on earth desire or need or basis in which we all exist if we're truly born again. See, desire is part of God's system. It's part of His economy. Yep. Praise the Lord. He draws us into intimacy with Him through yep. desires. Yep. And then He responds to our desires, our prayers, and He answers them. And He does it by our faith. The faith of Christ. The faith that He gives us, the measure of faith that He gives us, is how we respond to these desires. Amen? Yep. We trust in Him. We trust in our relationship. Yes. If you're not doing that, your desires aren't going to be met, and it's no wonder that you're depressed and bummed out yeah. because the heart is sick when it doesn't get the desire that it longs for. Why? Because you're incomplete. Yeah. You're not satisfying the thing that God has placed in you. Right. Amen? When a tree of life grows in our spirit, it will bear fruit. It has to bear fruit. Amen? The Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, amen, so on and so on. Yes. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Amen. As long as you are rooted and grounded. Yes. Amen? When you're connected, yes. the tree of life yes. will bear fruit. Yes. And the things that cause you to fly off the handle won't cause you to fly off the handle. You'll have patience. Yes. Amen? Uh -huh. You'll have joy. Yes. You'll have peace. They're produced when we abide in Christ. Yes, amen. He's the vine, we're the branches. Amen? Uh -huh. When our desires are met, when they're fulfilled, 
they've, they are fulfilled and our desires are met through our connection with yes. Jesus. Yes. An ongoing intimacy with Christ. Yep. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. Now stay with me. I know I'm going around in circles here. but In order to experience this, sometimes we need to be encouraged, even prodded, to believe. Sure. Amen. Provoked yeah. to believe. Yeah. God provokes us a lot of times in order to draw us into a realm of mysteries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He establishes the life of faith in us because he wants to unlock the hidden things to those who hunger for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. He tells us himself. It's not for everybody to know this stuff. Right. But for you whom the Father has chosen. Yes. Right. Praise the Lord. Psalms 20, uh, verse 1 through 9. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. In the name of the God of Jacob's defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy hill, from his holy heaven and with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Yes. Say, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Praise the Lord. Talking about the things that are coming on the earth and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. Yeah. When we find ourselves in a place of uncertainty, with no answer for our problems, with no answer for our situation, that's not the time to change your view of God and his right. character. No. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. But it's the time to be provoked, amen, to yes. believe yes. that Jesus is the yes. word, so he's always going to have something to say. Yes. Praise the Lord. The time's going to come when we will be challenged. We've yes. heard. And whatever can be shaken will be shaken, right? Yes. It's not a time to get freaked out and get afraid. It's the time that God's using to provoke yes. us to believe, yes. amen, for the supernatural. Yes. For the miraculous, for yes. the answers to all of our needs that we just spoke of right here that David was speaking of prophetically. Yes. Amen. Philippians 4.19. He says he'll supply all of our need. Yes, he does. According to his riches and glory. Amen. By Christ Jesus. Yes. By the tree of life. Amen. Yes. But my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. So you ask, why then do I have to endure uncertainty? Yeah. And the word of God gives us a hint. In Isaiah chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake I will not rest. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Yeah. How many of you know we are true Israel, the true yes. Jerusalem? Amen. Amen. It's not, it doesn't happen because of a circumcision or any, any religious right. right or even a natural genealogy, but because of faith in God. Yes. We are grafted in. Amen. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. In other words, yes. the unbelievers will see yes. our righteousness yes. and all the kings, our glory. Yes. All these big shot politicians, all the people who think they got all the answers and all the people who are looking for answers that you were talking about that we discussed here earlier, they'll see thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. In other words, you'll be the thing that everybody has to answer to. That's the crown of glory represents his royalty, amen. The diadem is what they use, amen, to do an, a fiat, an edict, or whatever, a law, whatever it is. Once that thing is pointed, it's got to be done, whatever it is yes. he says, right? Yes. We're that in his hands, yes. praise the Lord. So thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, 
for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy, and thy land shall be married. Now watch this. Hezba, Hez, Hezba means wife of a king. Beulah means married wife. Now remember this in the context of what we're talking about. Remember now, God has two wives. Beulah, amen, praise the Lord, and Hezba. King's wife and the married wife. Now look at 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, the truth is, it's unnatural for a Christian to not have a hunger for the impossible. Right. To not have a desire for the miraculous. Right. You're not living a Christian life if that doesn't kind of eat at you. Right. If you don't feel the, the, the hunger and the desire... For that supernatural. Right. Amen. See, we don't look at the visible, mm -hmm. but the invisible. We live by faith. Right. We're tr we try not to, but you have to. God provokes us. He, yes. he allows things so that we have to live by faith because right. that's the only way we connect with him. That's the only way we Amen. can stay connected to eternity. Right. To heaven on earth. Right. Praise the Lord. Psalm 77, verse 14. He challenges us to believe big. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, hope to the end, right? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. God is wanting to change the way we think about the so-called impossible. Just what Jody's talking about this morning. See, the average person thinks you're nuts. Right? No, you just believe in the impossible because it's not impossible with God. That's exactly He's right. wanting to change, amen, our, yes. our so-called impossible, the way we think about it. Yes. So that nothing shall be impossible right. to them that believe. Yes. Yes. All right, Job chapter 11 and verse 7. Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty under perfection? In other words, if we understood everything that there is to understand about God, and we did it intellectually, God would be just like us. Yeah. Instead of us being like God. Yeah. We would dumb him down to just a really good human. Yeah. He'd become our size. See, faith is to cause us to live according to the revelation that we have received in the midst of mysteries that we can't explain. Right. Right. That's why the world doesn't understand it. Because right. they got to have something tangible, something right. intellectually mm -hmm. they can understand or pass on to somebody they else. Right. And that's how you know people mm -hmm. that are living by the Spirit, that are born again. They're a little weird. Yep. They believe stuff that other people don't believe. Yes. They've got a connection with God yep. that they don't have. Yes. Praise the Lord. This revelation that we have that comes from God that's in the middle of all this mystery that we can't explain is called faith. Yes. That's what faith is. We don't have to be frightened by it. No. The fact that we can hope to believe sure. tells us that we have faith. Yes. Yeah. Or we just turn our back on it and walk away and yeah. say, a bunch of idiots, what are they talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. And it's interesting that he said, when I return, will I find faith? Yeah. Yeah. Will I find people who believe in the impossible? Right. Yeah. Will I find people that are willing to stand up and say, I'm hanging on until I see it. I'm not letting go. Right. He's provoked me yep. to a place where I can't yeah. say no, where I can't give up, where I can't right. say right. that won't happen. No, yeah. I'm provoked to the point yes. where I'm not going to let go until Amen. I see it Amen. in the natural. Yes. Like David said, right. I'm convinced yep. that I'm going to see him 
face to face. I'm going to see him in the world of the living. I will experience the impossible, the supernatural. Yes. So what's your desire? You know, what's your impossible dream? Remember, remember the story of Jacob? And keep in mind here, God's got two wives. And we can use it in all kinds of contexts, Israel and you know, the Gentiles. But you could also think of it as the world and the church. Or the church within the church. Yeah. The church of true believers in the church of agnostic yeah. believers. Yeah, there's a God, but you know, he's not really... This stuff is crazy. I mean, yeah. you can't believe it's really going to happen. You know, yeah. come on. So Jacob goes looking for a wife, and he ends up with two of them: mm -hmm. Rachel and Leah. Mm -hmm. Look at Genesis chapter 20, 29, 31 through thirty-five. Genesis twenty-nine, thirty-one through thirty-five. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction, now therefore my husband will love me. She conceived again and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord hath heard I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also, and she called his name Simeon. She conceived again and bare a son, and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. She conceived again and bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and stopped having kids. Praise the Lord. Look at Genesis chapter 30 and verse 1 then. And here's the other wife. When Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I'll die. She's provoked. She's barren. The other one's having babies like rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> and believe me, she's trying. It just ain't happening. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. She's barren. Yeah. And so she's provoked. She zealously yes. wants children. Yes. Amen? She's hearing Leah. Yeah. Rock a bye, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Top. Every night she's hearing it year after year after year. Yeah. Amen. And finally, amen, she goes so far as to do something in the flesh to make this happen because it ain't happening natu or supernaturally or spiritually. Amen. So she, she takes a, a handmaid and has her go to Jacob and she has a baby so that Rachel can... It's not hers. She's just... Doing a mind game, amen? And she's, it doesn't satisfy her. And so she goes back to believing God, and she's singing these baby songs now as though she really had children. Yeah. Right. right. Praise the Lord. She's been provoked yes, she has. to yes. believe. Jesus. Doesn't look, didn't look like she was being provoked, looked like she was being denied, right? Right. right. But it was God's way of provoking her to yes. believe yes. for the impossible. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. All right, Genesis chapter 30, verses 22 through 24. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her, and opened her womb, and she conceived and bare a son, and said, God has taken away my reproach, or God has given me my desire. Yeah. Amen? That's faith. That's what faith is. Yes. Amen? 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. This is a story about Hannah that we all know. There was a certain man of, God only knows how to pronounce that, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroboam, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. This guy's got two wives, too. Mm -hmm. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Peninnah. Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went out, up out of his city early to, yearly to worship and to sacrifice under the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. 
And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, although she didn't have any children, because he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her, the other wife. Mm -hmm. She provoked her sore for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. The wife with the kids provokes the wife who is barren. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's God provoking. Mm -hmm. This woman's more than happy to do the job. Right. So then said Elkanah, her husband to her, to Hannah, Why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. Praise the Lord. So Hannah is provoked. She is zealously going after this child. She's here in Penina singing rock of thy baby. Amen. Doing the, the lullabies and, and experiencing all that goes along with the children. Amen. And it's driving her nuts. Mm -hmm. She's going crazy. Amen. Mm -hmm. First Samuel chapter 1, 11 through 13. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child or the desire of my heart, I will give unto him the Lord all the days of his life and there shall be no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth, or in other words, he was looking at her mouth. And Hannah, she spoke in her heart. She was, her lips were moving, but nothing was coming out. Amen. Her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. Mm. Now, I'm just, this is just my twist on this, but I'm thinking she's going, Goodbye, baby. Amen. Hannah's singing by faith. Amen. Verse 14 through 20. All she needs is a word from the Lord. Right. Right? Right. Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not your handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken hitherto. And then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Now I'm saying what we heard here this morning, mm -hmm. you can receive it or you can just say it's a bunch of drunken morons talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's your choice. Yeah. But I'm saying God is provoking us yes. to believe for something yeah. supernatural. Yes. Something miraculous. Yes. Something impossible to the natural person, right. to the average mind. Amen? Right. A word from God. Her desire of the Father. The one who it looks like it wouldn't happen, couldn't happen, right. is the one it happens to and for. Right. Mm -hmm. In this context, God has two wives. Romans chapter 10, mm -hmm. 19 through 21. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hand unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Use this in the context of what we're talking about within the church. Right? Two wives. He's reaching out for one continuously that rejects, that refuses to believe, that refuses to embrace or become intimate with. Mm -hmm. 
Romans 11, 9 through 12. David said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say that had they stumbled that they should fall, God forbid, but rather through their fall salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Praise the Lord. You want a miracle? You want what seems impossible? Delight yourself also in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. He'll give you something of the Father. Yes. Now, God gave me this scripture 30 some years ago when I first got born again. I never understood it. I've been trying to figure it out ever since, and I get bits and pieces, but it's coming together more and more all the time. Isaiah 54. I'm going to do the whole thing. If you can't, I can read it from here. No, it's okay. Sing, O Baron. Uh -huh. yeah. Thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. I'm saying we need to be singing some baby songs. Yes. Yes. Enlarge the place of your tent. Yes. And let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. Yes. For thou shalt break forth. Thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shall not yes. remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy redeemer. Yes. Uh, let me just pra pra paraphrase this a little bit or not paraphrase it, but preface what I'm going to continue to read here by saying that within the body of Christ there is the acceptable religious church. It's accepted by the world. Right. Why? Because they don't live by faith. Right. They live by yeah. traditions and, and ritual. Yeah. They'll let them come and say a prayer at the Congress, and oh, but, but not the ones who believe in Jesus, not the right. ones who have a Jesus connection, not the ones who are going to want to call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're the, kind of the weirdos. This is the thing, if I say anything about Donald Trump, is he's not afraid or hasn't right. been afraid. For whatever reason, I don't know his motivation, I don't care. Right. But it's putting people out there in a position where they can yep. speak for the Lord. Yes. Right? It doesn't matter. God can use anybody any way he wants to. And that's all that really matters to me is that God's the one doing it. I don't believe in everything Donald Trump does and says, but there's a lot of good stuff happening too. Yeah. There's some things that need to be done that should have been done a long time ago, but they, they're, they're being done now by somebody that they hate. Right. Yeah. Right? right? And that's one reason why they won't accept those things, because they can't stand the guy that's doing it. Right. Praise the Lord. But this is as the waters of Noah unto me. God is saying, I, I, I know there's two churches. I know you're, this isn't news to me. But I'm telling you, the one that has been in the limelight, the one that seems to have expanded and grown, he said the one that has been shunned and pushed aside and, and 
provoked now right. to believe for the supernatural and the right. miracle is the one I'm turning to. And he's saying, yes. start singing some baby songs yes. because Jesus. you're not the, the barren one is going to be producing yes. far more than that other one ever yes. dreamed of. Amen. Yes. Because it's going to be by God and not by yes. themselves and not by their yes. effort and not by their ability. Yes. Stand here today. How's God going to do He Nobody's getting the credit for this but God. It's going to be a miracle. They are barren. They can't do yes. nothing. But all of a sudden, everybody's going, whoa, what's going on there? What's yes. That must be God. That's, that will draw people, amen. It will cause fruit, yes. amen, to be born, amen. Yes. For as this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. So whatever coming, it ain't coming from God. Exactly. Amen. For the mountains will depart, the hills will be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that has mercy on thee. Praise the Lord. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay your stones with fair colors, thy foundations with sapphires, and I'll make your windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all the children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness shalt they, thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Jesus. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for your sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and have created the waster to destroy. I'm using that to provoke you. Yes. To believe the supernatural, to believe the miracle. No weapon that's formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Praise God. Amen. So, hallelujah. The Lord says, sing now, bear. God's word is seed, and it will produce even if he has to provoke us to believe the impossible. Praise the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. God prods us. God provokes us back to the tree of life. Back to where heaven is on earth. God on us. That produces fruit. Sing, O barren, and celebrate desire accomplished. Celebrate the desires of your heart. Yes. Your fruit will be more than the married wife. Yes. Or the one that it was expected yes. from. Yes. Looks like it shouldn't. Looks like it couldn't. But it does. Yes. Amen. It's revelation in the middle of mystery. Yes. It's called faith. Yes. And we can do all things. Yes. Through faith. God's word is seed. It'll produce a miraculous harvest. It'll produce fruit. Sing, thou barren. Praise the Lord. We need to start singing the impossible. Because God's going to do the impossible. And how do I know he's going to do it? Because he put a desire in me 40 years ago. And just because I haven't seen it is the very reason why I should be believing it. Because it looks barren, don't make it barren. He said, sing Yes, yes. when you're barren. Because you're going to have more than the married wife, than the accepted, than the, the one who has been identified. Praise the Lord. God's going to do... For sure, yes. some miraculous things in the last days. Yes. And this is just part of it. This is what he's talking sure. about in that scripture. Mm -hmm. sure. He's going to turn this thing upside down, and it'll be the first time it's been right side up in his eyes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're seeing the craziness of it. And God's saying, that's just the earth without heaven. That's why you see it for what it is. But I want to bring heaven on earth, and I yeah. have to have you Yep. for that to happen. Yep. I've got to have somebody that will believe. Will I find faith yes. when I come? Praise yep. the Lord. Yep. I'm, gonna, I, I'm determined 
to be one of them yes. that's going to be in faith, no matter how it looks. Yeah. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Yes. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand. Clap. If there was ever a time for faith, it's now. Yes. And that's what God is, is doing. He's provoking us to live by faith because we've been able to cut some corners. Yeah. We've, you know, for the most part, we've been able to do this without faith, in this country especially. Yeah. It's only when we have a cancer to deal with, you know, yeah. or, a, or a horrible health issue or a financial problem that we really start yeah. believing for something that doesn't look like it can happen. But God's saying, I, I want you to live your life that way yes. so that I can be revealed, so that yes. I can be seen in you. When you start believing this way, when you start living a life of faith, that's when God shows up. That's when people start seeing him. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Give him one more hand yes. clap. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Sing, O Baron. Hallelujah. Yes. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here this morning. Thanks for sharing. Yes.